Hello everyone and welcome back, good to see you all once again. For me personally today, I think we could say we have a pretty special show as it's our 50th episode. And to celebrate this milestone of our half century, we are going to be looking at, the super cute game and watch, new widescreen game called, Climber. Which was first offered for sale, by Nintendo March 8th back in 1988. This game and watch sold a respectable, 250,000 units, and, as seen here in the instructions booklet, it was given the production code of, DR106. And the booklet starts off with a helpful table of contents, then on the facing page, we briefly see the game's description together with its backstory. This is followed by the routine battery maintenance and care, replacement and disposal protocols, together with the detailed instructions on setting both the time and alarm functions. Interestingly we see a whole page dedicated to introducing us to the cast of characters and their roles. Which is quickly followed by a comprehensive explanation of how to play the game, and that leads into the basics of starting the actual gameplay. Which then leads us into the various ways the player has available to them to score points, coupled with how a miss or lost lives are deducted, and lastly, we see the bonus rounds, which finish up what I consider to be the introduction section of this booklet. The next 7 pages are dedicated to the main techniques that Nintendo recommend during gameplay. Each page presents the information in cartoon series of frames that better explain the physical moves of our characters. As you read through the booklet, and initially play the game, you'll learn how to control Climber, who is trying to get to the top of a 25-step fortress. Climber has been given a special pair of boots that allows him to jump really high, and he is also adorned with a set of powerful armor, which he uses to break through the various ceilings or platforms seen in this game. Each time the player climbs up a level, or completes a jump, the number of steps needed reduces, which is shown in the top right of the screen. Then once you clear the level, which is known as a phase, you move on to the next phase, and the number shown resets to 25 once again. On the way up you have to watch out for several baddies, such as Blockman, who is trying to stop you, and he can even build additional floors or platforms, and then there's the evil Irem, a bird-like creature that must be closely watched too. Also watch out for the pesky and thorny plants. After every 5 phases, a monster will appear at the top of the fortress, and while the monster is randomly moving up and down, you will need to stab the monster with your newly acquired sword. Sounds scary eh? So, looking back at the screen in the gameplay, we are just finishing up phase 1. And with a total of 45 points, phase 2 begins, the counter now returns to reading 25 steps for this new level. But Blockman gets us, we've lost our first life. This mistake causes us to have to restart this level, therefore the counter reverts once more to 25 steps being required. For those who are confident in their skill and ability, you can jump straight to level 6 by holding the jump button while pressing down the game key and then releasing it. If you wish to play the game without any sounds, truthfully a nice option, then just press the left and down button simultaneously and while keeping them pressed, push the game key. At the top of the steps, you have two chances to grab the bonus bird and score an additional 20 points. But don't worry if you don't as you will still go on or progress to the next level without losing a life. Sometimes a glittering, magical, floor or platform will appear. If you are able to hop onto this, you will be able to climb an extra 7 steps automatically. Remember you can go to the right of the screen from the left side and back to avoid enemies or collect bonuses. This is the 6th handheld, in the new widescreen series of Game & Watch, that we've looked at and reviewed, with the two remaining games episodes following shortly. The case is a pale orange, surrounded by a white border and capped off with a painted, slightly off orange metal faceplate. Issued initially in the classic cardboard games box, with styrofoam tray, batteries and booklet, this was much later condensed down to a mere blister pack, known as a carded variant, when sales flagged and unsold old stock needed shifting. Two years earlier, there was a previous issued game and watch called Climber, it was from the Crystal Screen series in 1986. These were very unusual handhelds, whose screen, or playing area was transparent, and they were pretty fragile too. Another revisit of sorts happened, in 2002, when the Game Boy Advance, Game & Watch Gallery 4 reissued Climber as an unlockable, but sadly it was only playable in the classic mode, it also required the accumulation of 130 in-game stars. So, to finish up, let's see a montage of images of today's star in focus, and remember, when Climber bumps into Blockman, or hits Iron during a jump or even falls off the platform, one life is lost or a miss is scored. Additionally Climber will also drop down 7 floors, and he will need to restart the climb from there. Lastly, as with most game and watches, after 3 misses the game ends. 
Well, that just about wraps up our 50th episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Think about leaving a small comment. Some encouragement is always appreciated. And obviously if you're not one of our small, but elite band of subscribers, please subscribe and join us on our quest for all things Nintendo. And lastly, whatever you do, I'd like to offer you a big and genuine thank you for actually joining us here today.